Rumor has it, Olympus has a new camera around the corner. Now we're in 2020, so I think it is perfect time to have a look at this, our workhorse for the past four years, the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II. Two thousand sixteen was a big year for myself, Tracy, and Red Thirty Five. This very channel that you're watching right now. Uh, why is that? Well, let's look back at the history. So, um, I was fortunate enough to be invited by Olympus to test the new Olympus M1 Mark II at the time, and uh, I was actually a full-time uh, professional using Canon system. So was Tracy. She was filming with the 5D series, and so both of us, both of us were actually full-frame users for a number of years, actually. However, we both also own Michael Forther as a side camera. So uh, Tracy was using a Panasonic G7, and I had the original uh, Olympus OMD EM5 camera. Um, we were just using it kind of on the side, it's a, either, either as a second camera or just as a fun camera. So we never really use it professionally. But everything changed until I tried the E1 Mark II. And I was so impressed with how it performs, how it handles, and how the files looks like after trying it in Spain with Olympus. Uh, then I took the camera back, and uh, they were kind enough to loan it to me for another two months to actually just test it out to see whether it's actually worth using it in a professional environment. So I also gave the camera to Tracy to use it, and she was equally impressed with how the video came out, especially from the stabilization point of view. So we both were so impressed that we just made the switch into that. 2017 and this is where this channel starting to uh, uh, come into fruition and became a Michael Forther channel um, so yeah we this is kind of like a monumental camera for both of us and I think um, uh, to me it's not only just a professional decision but also a personal decision as well because now I have a whole bunch of uh, uh, Michael Forther gears now uh, so I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about the, the OMD M1 Mark II and the significance of it and also why I think it's still a very capable camera in 2020 and I know they're about rumors but you know it's still a very very good camera and whether you should actually considering getting one of these as well. Okay, so I said this is an important cameras for both Trace and I and also this channel. Uh, it, it is a very, very uh, important thing as a professional because choosing the right gear is always uh, very tricky. You know, like I don't move system to system very, very easily, uh, as you as you see. You know, I've been with Canon for about 15 years, and if you look at all the other professionals out there, they rarely switch systems. You know, unlike consumers when they don't invest in a huge amount of gears and then uh, they may have just one or two lenses maybe a, a couple of accessories and it's easy for them to switch but when you're a professional you invest in a whole entire system like the uh, uh, like speed lights uh, multiple lenses adapters memory cards batteries the whole lot you know you're talking about thousands if not ten thousands uh, worth of equipment at any one time so switching is never ever easy but as a professional what we look for ultimately is handling reliability 
and whether it actually suits what we do as a professional. So there are many professionals out there and uh, I can easily tell you now, format is only one side of it. And uh, we choose Michael Four Third because it suits our needs. And in fact, you know, it suits everything that I do anyway. Um, if you are looking at something like, let's say you need high megapixel, yeah, Michael Four Third may not be for you, but also something like if you shoot a lot of ultra low light, for instance, yes, this may not be an option for you either. However, for everything else, I do think Michael Four Third is perfect. And especially Olympus has one of the best stabilizers in the world. And also the colors are absolutely fantastic. Me as a phot uh, 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 professional photographer, color is one of the important things in my life. I don't want to spend time in process processing, adjusting colors for skin tones and things like that. And I think this is one area that many people, or actually not many people talk about is Olympus color science. To me, I think in the world, there are only a handful of companies actually produce very natural skin tone colors. Um, um, Olympus is being one of, I think, the most natural looking ones. You know, and I've tried a lot of system before I made the decision to switch to Olympus and ultimately it was the color that kind of drove me into it. And of course, you know, I was so impressed with the M1 Mark II, uh, the overall performance of it and then uh, the, and coupled with the color science, this is why I made the choice of this particular camera to be my professional choice. So let's look at some of the features that I, I talked about before, but I want to reiterate once again why it's still very, very good. First is AF. Well, yes, the AF is phenomenal. This is actually one of the most imp uh, impressive uh, options or features that I've experienced when I first tested the uh, OMD in one Mark II in 2016. Um, but in 2019, it received a firmware update and make it so good that I think it's very capable in video terms as well as stills. Um, it's, it's brilliant, you know, it's uh, on par with the latest flagship, the EM1X camera, and I just find it extremely, extremely reliable. Um, as, especially for uh, a photographer or filmmaker myself, I vlog a lot. I do a lot of continuous AF because I'm filming myself um, and when it comes to steel photography I do a lot of candid walking shots and things like that and I could totally rely on this AF. Um, I don't do fast action so I don't do sports and things like that but this is perfectly fine for that I mean from other reviewers I've seen so far and, uh, and I know also from other ambassadors in Olympus you know, they shoot fast action like racing cars and things like that without any problem whatsoever so I can I can see, you know, where the AF is so important for uh, a lot of professional environments, especially for myself, I think it's, it's definitely very, very reliable. So being a professional, of course, you need a camera that you can rely on. So I talked about the AF and now let's talk about the ruggedness or the build quality of the thing. Yes, this thing has been abused by both Tracy and I, you know, we had, I think, but between the two of us, we had four in one Mark II, which is kind of nuts. But if you're a professional, you always need at least two cameras anyway. One, your main cameras and also a second backup. And sometimes you actually do use two cameras side by side because you put different lenses on. So instead of switching lenses, it's much easier to hold, have two cameras next to you and switch whatever focal length you need at a time. And for, fil for filmmaking, you always need B and C cameras as well. So yeah, the more camera you have, the more angles you can capture at the same time. So that's why we have lots of them. And, uh, in terms of build quality, I have to say, it, Olympus does produce some of the best or rugged built cameras in the world. I mean, like the the latest M1X, you know, it's a it's a testament for how rugged and how good it is in terms of build quality you can get from a camera manufacturer. But the M1 Mark II, being a four euro camera, is no, sh it's not shy at all. It's, it's actually very very good. We have absolutely done anything with it. You've probably seen uh, our previous midterm review of the E1 Mark II. We shot it in heavy rain and that is not a one-off. You know, we've done it many, many times. We shot in the rain a lot. We shot in sandy situations. We have dropped the cameras, you know, you can see scars on my camera and uh, a tracer used it so much the, the actual rubber, uh, the rubber grip is actually peeling off and mine is actually halfway up as well. So uh, yeah, we, we have used this camera so much. Uh, it, it hasn't felt, it's still usable. It's still performing even today after you know if I count you know how many photos I've taken with the E1 Mark II this particular body I've probably done about at least a couple of hundred thousand shots already if not like uh, 300,000 but it's still working okay although that now they I will use my E1S because I do believe the shutter count is probably reaching the end of life now so I'm using this as a backup camera at the moment or video cam so not so much of a still camera now uh, but it's just proving to be just so reliable. Well, one more thing I have to say is that Olympus does offer a professional care system that we actually pay money for it and would never ever use. But 
in a way, it kind of shows how how good the Olympic system that that we never ever really needed it, and they, it does give you like servicing for the cameras and also free uh, repairs and things like that covered within that period. So, um, but they do offer it. But now I'm thinking whether I regretted buying it. But I guess for for your safety's sake, you should still get one. Now, let's look at form factor and handling of the E1 Mark II. Yes, Michael Forther is about size, right? And this is also one of the main reasons that drove me into the OMD E1 Mark II for professional reasons. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing how light it is when I first got hold of it and how good in terms of uh, how good it feels on the hand. Uh, I use bigger camera, like, originally like the 5D series, so was Tracy. And the equivalent in Nikon terms would be the D700 series and a D800 series. But these are big, heavy systems. I, I really remember the days when I used to use Canon for my weddings, for instance. I have to have a trolley, which I need like minimum two bodies, like I mentioned. And then uh, I need to have a whole bunch of lenses. So the whole case would weigh about 20 kilo at a minimum so depending was well, what other lenses combination I need or what other accessories like speed lights and things I would need for that particular shoot so it's a heavy thing but like as soon as I try this and I fit the whole uh, 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 system out all I need was just the backpack and it weighs half the weight so I could absolutely pack my bag with different lenses and different accessories it will weigh just about 10 kilogram if not like lighter so it, it's just amazing how small I can get so I could actually travel a lot lighter for any assignments not just wedding but travel and other things as well it, it, it's just amazing how good it is and in terms of handling you know i think e1 mark ii has one of the best grip for a uh, uh, a small camera because it's uh, you know this is a really perfect size for it uh, for my hand and then uh, it's always like built for me and uh, I, I love it you know if you haven't tried the grip of an olympus camera you should really try one just hold it in your hand just to feel it and also in terms of uh, balancing i talk about it a lot in all my camera reviews balancing is very important if you look at the camera itself you know like uh, at the moment i'm not holding it but you can see how good it is just by holding it like this and it's uh, it's a very well balanced cameras. So if I talk about Olympus cameras and I cannot do it without mentioning about stabilization and yes this is also one of the main features I need to highlight to you guys about the E1 Mark II because it was very good and it is still very good in 2020 and um, yeah it's in my having being a Canon guy you know like all I ever knew was lens stabilization because uh, that's or they had they never ever had any in-body stabilizers i never really realized how good it was even though i had the original em5 uh, 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 cameras but it wasn't as good as the yeah the e1 mark ii and this is really really just insane because now i can hand hold a shot in a couple of seconds at night times and if you have a fast prime and that's perfectly usable and uh, even when I go to wedding for instance I never ever needed a tripod to do these close-up macro ring shots anymore I could easily just slap on a macro lens and just hand hold it and uh, I, I, so those days when I need to use a tripod at wedding is long gone so I don't even need to use it anymore yeah occasionally I will probably still you want to do a, a use a tripod to do some time lapses and things like that but yeah in terms of stills it's pretty good unless I want to do some light trail at night time but that's totally different kind of uh, a photography altogether and even for Tracy for videos she uh, when she was using Canon she had to always carry a very heavy monopod because you want to minimize any wobbles and jitters and things like that in videos and uh, as, as good as at the time you know the lens stabilization it has in the Canon system it just can't beat the stabilization in the Olympus camera like what Tracy is doing right now she's hand holding this entire video and it just looks like it's standing on a tripod as I already mentioned, I had the uh, Olympus EM5 camera, so you know I already kind of familiar with Michael Four Third and or mirrorless system. However, one thing I hated it. Uh, uh, it was the battery life and uh, that was kind of maybe one of the reasons why I never ever actually switched professionally to any Michael Fourth system not not just Olympus uh, uh, at the time when I first got the EM5 because I love the EM5 it was a very capable camera I mean I could actually do a lot with that thing but it was the battery life that really hindered it uh, I thought you know if I ha ever ever have to carry the EM5 out there to do a professional shoot I may have to carry a dozen batteries to be honest uh, uh, it, it just never really uh, have that ca capacity to do that number of shots that I need for any job but that all changed when the E1 Mark II came out because this is I think in it's the first ever mirrorless camera to embrace a bigger battery if you look back in 2016 
none of the uh, uh, mirrorless cameras out there, whether whether it's Sony, whether it is uh, a Fuji, any any systems out there, they all use that tiny flat batteries it's only about 12 15 uh, milliamps so they are very very small and uh, they never last you know they only last about 300 shots you know at max you know and if, if you shoot video you forget it you know you probably do it about 20 minutes videos and you're gone so even one mark ii was the very very first camera to embrace a much much bigger camera a uh, battery to lengthen the shots in fact you can even add the battery to have two big batteries in it so for me it's a is a really good thing and then uh, when I was testing in Ronda uh, I actually shot the Inman Mark II for the whole entire day with one battery and that was really amazing because that was the kind of thing that I was thinking if a mirrorless ca uh, camera would give me a big battery that will last for the whole day I I'm sold I I'll be moving it so that <laughs> that was one of, the, one of the remaining reasons that I'm, I I'm just kind of think OMD Inman Mark II has the big battery yeah why not it lasts for the full day that makes my day so yeah battery life is definitely a plus a lot of stuff in this video and there are still many many things I haven't even mentioned uh, such as uh, pro captures uh, live composite live bulb focus bracket uh, all the other things that this camera has and uh, which will enhance the photography game by a mile if you're coming from other systems and uh, so it, it, it's actually pretty amazing how advanced the camera was even you know in 2020 you know it still has a lot of features that will definitely impress you you know and uh, I, I think you know to me this is camera that for any professional and if, if you ask me this is this a professional camera I would probably confidently and easily say yes you know I've been using it Trace has been using it for the last four years day in day out and everything that we've done with this channel professionally uh, around the world you know it's all through this very camera so yeah it is a professional guy a professional system and a professional camera is that can withstand any sort of situations and uh, even though it's a little bit naked now but I think it can still perform you know if I really wanted to uh, but it does have its limit like I mentioned any product will have a uh, has, has a shelf life and this is the shutter at least you know is reaching the end of it now you know I'm counting at the moment so uh, uh, I I believe this camera if you can just change the shutter it will probably continue to service but as a professional you want the reliability and this probably may not be as reliable as it first started uh, using it in four years ago so it will be my uh, kind of backup now and uh, it will retire very proudly I hope you guys enjoyed this video yes this is the popular OMD EM1 Mark II end of term look when I say end of term you know it's not discontinue anything you know I'm just like to say because it's it's been four years since this was launched and uh, we've been using it day in day out and uh, love this guy to be and we have a lot of emotions towards this camera as, as, as you know that we start everything this channel with this guy here um, so a new camera will be quite interesting and rumors already starting to bubble around uh, the Olympus cam 
Instagram and uh, you guys probably read something already but what would you like to see have some discussion down in the comment section uh, that would be quite interesting I would like to see what you guys would like to uh, uh, look at in the new camera you know what the Olympus should be including in the new camera what they should do in 2020 and beyond and uh, yeah let's let's have a chat I think it would be quite interesting so if this is your first time in this channel don't forget to like us like this video subscribe to our channel and put on the bell notification so you know when our new video is coming out until next time though happy new year once again and see you next time bye was it I thought it was quite good. All right. Okay. But purely just looking at how I hold it. As soon as I speak, you're gonna <laughs> see. <laughs> I'm ready. Yeah. Remember that scene in a uh, in Gladiator? Shh. Very cinematic. I don't have that physique, so I can't do that. I can't do the topless in this weather's conditions anyway. Too cold. Don't forget to subscribe. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> what <are you> doing? <laughs> it's kind of hard, quite. <laughs>